Hello, hello there, and welcome back to War Thunder aboard the Arkansas. And that is the US Battle Rating 6.7 Premium Rank 5 Battleship, or shall I say Dreadnought of the Wyoming class in its 1942 configuration. And this is a solid, fair battleship. It faces both the top end of the line battleships and the big hitters, but also a lot of cruisers. And while it has some trouble dealing with the battleships, it can absolutely destroy the cruisers. It has an all or nothing armor scheme and it has two different main battery shells, AP and AG. And I will almost exclusively use AP. Now, before I go further into this first impressions video, and I have some screenshots for you, um, first things first, I take you through the entire battle. The entire video is one battle, and if you get bored, then that might just be the case because you're seeing an average gameplay. It's long, it's rewarding, but it's just point and click all the time. That's Battleship Fight, and to an extent Gaijin was right when they said a very long time ago that battleships will never be introduced because their fight is boring. But that has to do with how Gaijin implemented battleships, how Gaijin designed the mechanics and so forth. And I could, you know, rage about this all day, but that's a bit stupid in my opinion. So I will just give you a first impressions, run down the numbers, let you show the uncut gameplay in this case. And I have to add here one thing. Apologies for the lack of video output, but there were a lot of IRL stuff. Um, I also have a massive tinnitus that just doesn't go away. So the ringing in the ear and that for a change has nothing to do with the PC or War Thunder. Um, yeah, and I also have IRL. Not a lot of time. I'm so busy with just paperwork. It's it's absurd, and I hate it. And um, yeah, I also can't play the event. But that has nothing to do with the ship. So I do not really like the ship as much as the SMS Nassau in its style. But it is... Mm, arguably in some ways more effective. Let's just have a look at the armor. So the ship has a nice 280 millimeter main belt. That is the same as the front bulkhead so you can nicely angle it and that is supported by the firing angles of the turrets. And you also have the 280 millimeters for the barbettes. That means you need to angle it to be safe from even heavy cruiser fire at medium to close range. But when you angle it, you're actually a tough boot to crack. And that has two reasons. First of all, well, it's then angled armor. And also they cannot really uh, shell drop through the bow into the magazine because there is a 70 millimeter deck in the bow. So you don't have a real icebreaker, but a armored deck. Then there is also the main deck, which ranges from 101 millimeters over the front magazine to uh, 114 and 76 millimeters where the machinery is, to then also 108 and 114 millimeters for the rear end of the ship. The rear bulkhead is 228 millimeters, so that is significantly less than the front bulkhead. So reverse angling, despite even better firing angles for the four rear turrets, if you will, is then not advised. The ship sits a little bit high in the water, and that means this is really dangerous because the ship has behind the belt no coal bunkers and no turtle bag. And the ammo racks are really high, so they are an actual weakness. And so angling is advised at all times. And you can go bow in, even that is safer than showing broadside. The turret faces are actually really tough for two reasons. 305 millimeters angled at roughly 38 to 40 uh, degrees of impact angle. 
and that gives you an effective thickness of somewhere between 380 and 500 millimeters and also the turret face is relatively narrow much more narrow than the barbette width the uh, upper belt it's almost superstructure armor if you will that also protects the uh, three secondaries per side is only 165 millimeters thick so this is a ship that can deal nicely with plunging fire it can be angled to great effect and the all or nothing makes sort of sense but it doesn't protect you from the really hard hitters such as the japanese or the american 14 inch guns the 15 inch guns from the germans and the british but also from the high velocity 11 and 12 inch guns from the soviets and from the uh, Scharnhorst. so you have to watch out right the next thing is you have actually um an anti-torpedo protection system with uh, of absorbing 250 kilograms of blast which sets you apart from the German HMS HMS uh, SMS Nassau sorry about this and the uh, Marat the Soviet premium battleship that I will also feature soon TM then you also have a lot and I mean a lot of a small caliber AA we start with eight three inch quote unquote heavy AA uh, so no five inch uh, AA because those are actually casement mounted secondaries then we have six quadruple 1.1 inch or 28 millimeter um, guns that, that that are not really good but in the masses they actually do something and then we have 26 20 millimeter early guns so you are somewhat protected from uh, enemy planes but most of the time if they come at a high altitude or they know how to dodge or come around an island you just don't have the stopping power um, but it's significantly better than nothing and well the German SMS Nassau has no AA whatsoever so the speed 39 kilometers per hour that's a problem when you get he spammed um, you also get funnel damage that drops your speed even further and when you turn you also lose a lot of speed this is not a fast ship now it's not the slowest but it's definitely not fast so dodging bombs or dodging torpedoes yeah rather not and that then brings me to the ammo so the first shell type is the stock 12 inch CLB HE uh, 33 kilograms of TNT equivalent bursting charge 68 millimeters of penetration but I haven't really tested it out so far how good HE is in this patch but HE hasn't really convinced me in the few salvos that have fired it it's not really high yield compared to some other uh, big HE shells um, of 12 inches or higher that some of them have twice the yield and the next thing is it's HE it just doesn't uh, hit the guts hard so stick to the second shell type which is the 12 inch MK15 APC and yeah 11 kilogram heavy bursting charge and up to 562 millimeters of penetration but it falls off due to the shell type relatively sharply at 5,000 meters it's only 416 millimeters and at 10 kilometers just 293 that's not really terrible it's not the worst but it still leaves things to be desired especially for 6.7 and the problem is that's it there is no second AP round to choose from, maybe with more pen and lower yield. There is no SAP round with maybe extremely high yield. That's it. Just a mediocre HE and an okayish AP. The secondaries just don't cut it. Only three and also they are not magical. So this is what you got. And with this you're expected to grind at 6.7 versus really big nasty ships such as the Scharnhorst, 
um, the Arizona, the Japanese battleships, they all can hurt you a lot harder than you can hurt them. Now, if you would have asked me before the patch what I expect the meta to become, I would have, well, guessed that the majority of people that play naval, so two out of three people, actually would buy the bundles or um, for Golden Eagles, the German battleship. And you have a lot more battleships in the mixture than I had so far with my battles, in my experience. And so you still can feast on cruisers. You do not really do it with style. You do not really do it with absolute fury and might, as for example the Scharnhorst did in the last patch. Um, as one example. But you consistently whittle them down. You can one-shot them, you can absolutely murder them. If you angle, stay at distance, they do not really have all that much against you. Um, and also the torpedo threat hasn't been that big. I have not been hit by a single torpedo so far. And while that's great, I expected there to be more players that would play Japanese torpedo boats or the torpedo cruisers uh, to farm the battleships, but there are not enough. I mean, yeah, sure, in this frame there are like three, me, the Renown, and the Scharnhorst, but the majority of players in the overwhelming amount of battles that are played so far in this patch are cruisers. And it doesn't really matter so much for RP how much you kill, rather than how much you shoot at things and kill things, and especially battle time participation and you can easily rack up 15 20,000 battles in a 20 minute hmm, 20,000 rp per battle um thanks brain um in a 20 minute battle and that's okay i'd say and you can do it consistently and getting consistent results from a premium is something really nice um and essentially that's it. There is not much more that I can say. And I just want to bring your attention back to the battle. Because, yes, I held uh, sinking that Scharnhorst, but, you know, I had the back of his turrets at relative short ranges. Um, I dodged the torpedoes from the Scharnhorst. Uh, the Renown was uh, just shooting at it from the other side. And... You know, I had some luck in the early game with six kills so far, so I'm okay, right? How could this battleship be improved? Well, as a premium, you could have introduced a different class. Something to give you a completely different flavor. Um, if you have, as the Russian standard, the Marat, which cannot be ammo racked, I've tried, enemies have tried on me, um, then why not give the Americans um, something like a Nevada class or a Pennsylvania class, for instance? Um, why does it have to be a Wyoming class? Because at 6.7, you just lack the penetration. You do not have outstanding DPM. Uh, 12 guns and 30 second reload is the same DPM as the... Uh, as the SMS Nassau with its 8 11 inch guns which sits at 6.3 um, so that's that's okay right there is nothing wrong with the ship but the threat of getting ammo wrecked like this if you have some opposition that actually shoots at you like this it's just not the same power level as the Marat and you're also not as sturdy overall um, under normal battle conditions as the German Nassau. And the Nassau has much more cruisers to shoot at. Maybe the meta changes and you will face more and more and more battleships, especially much more modern battleships. Compression is a big thing. The difference between 6.3 and 6.7 is massive. So my problem with the Arkansas is that it's not future-proof. 
in the future it will reach to 7.7 battleships currently or 7.0 so this ship will face it, uh, from the current perspective Iowa's Yamato's Bismarck's and that ain't fun that that will not be fun this is what I'm talking about future proof ships and paying 70 bucks for that bundle is a hefty price to ask I also thought that $60 per pack for some of the premium cruisers is absurd and it is in the case of the uh, Admiral Hipper class the Prince Eugen but that ship has passed the test of time in my opinion if you bought it early on it actually served you well it was always a bit of a glass cannon but the guns were nasty here it is a completely different experience but another problem is that your AA is not sufficient your armor is not sufficient enough versus the hard hitters even at long ranges and you sit too high in the water there are so many things to talk about and to discuss and uh, bring getting forwards and backwards in the argumentation I know this isn't really the spicy topic that you all awaited probably but this is probably the most honest and direct representation of that ship that I can give you and if you are bored and I repeat my part from earlier by this battle you are effectively bored by a premium that if you buy it and you want to grind with it both SL and RP you yourself will be bored I like naval forces I like it much more than chat gameplay which I haven't touched in it feels an eternity but the same can be said about tanks I, I, I just don't feel tanks anymore um, at least at the moment but ships were always great. But in this ship, I, I'm, I'm just getting a bit bored. Uh, it, it's just, yeah, there are ships like the Sharnos that under normal combat conditions, you cannot really harm and you don't want to shoot to draw attention to you, right? And for a Sharnos, you're a relatively easy picking compared to other battleships that the Sharnos could shoot at instead. Um, But then again, it's unfair because I have continuously good battles with the ship at the moment. I sink cruisers, I sink a battleship here and there, uh, I try to angle and to get into a position that I'd like. And before I forget, um, this battleship doesn't have a float plane. It doesn't have a catapult fighter, whatever you want to call it. And that's a problem. So you have no influence whatsoever at all on the outcome of domination games. And that is just a bit exhausting. Some people have no problem in bailing out in, in what they use. But I have a little bit of a problem with it, me personally. And, you know, we still have to discuss repair costs of 18,000 silver lines. Granted the SL modifier is the joint highest in the game with 1200% if you do not have a premium account and 1800% if you have a premium account so that is a good income um, I still think that if you are after silver lines the Frank Knox, the USS Davis, the USS Moffat they are just better choices um, more interesting battles, more rap more rapid fire engagements and more targets to shoot at. Late game in those battleship fights it can get relatively boring, really boring because a lot of people have already left and when you have to fight the last eight, seven, six minutes with just one or two remaining enemies that you cannot really kill because there are uh, an Arizona or a Scharnhorst at long distance that just have freshly respawned and uh, you have no outcome at all on the uh, you have no influence on the outcome of the battle at all 
I'm not I'm not so sure. Um, again, this is just a first impressions. This is just a raw thinking at the start of the patch, uh, especially in event times. Yeah. So let's summarize. You have actually for your battle rating not the greatest armor, although angling helps immensely. Good firing angles, some AA, no torpedoes, but torpedo protection. You're slow, uh, but you have 12 guns, but you have a 30 second reload. You have average to mediocre HE. You have okayish AP, but you have no sap. That's basically the summary of this ship. Um, sap would help one way or the other. I still have to get grips with some of the new mechanics. The flooding mechanic in particular, which is unpredictable as hell. Um, I don't feel this patch so far. It feels like a diet version of the previous patch, just more expensive. And that gives me a lot of um, not very welcomed goosebumps. So at the end, I had to cut out one minute because I had literally nothing left to say about the ship. And let's skip to the last kill um, that decides then the game and we win. And I escaped the wrath of a Nevada. And let's just go right to the results. So that battle was approximately 22 minutes and we got nearly a quarter of a million without a booster and uh, 18,000 RP. Quite nice. That's it for me today. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give it a like if it did. Subscribe if you want to see more. And let me know in the comment section what you think about this whole battleship patch thingy, the premiums. How does the various different premiums feel? How does the patch overall feel for you? Let me know. And we'll see each other next time in the skies, on the battlefields and on the waves of War Thunder.